Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this Wednesday night Bible study for the Church of the Eternally Secure, uh, also known as CES. Uh, I've got uh, Sister Renee with me and Brother Cripps, as usual, and Matthias is producing the program. So welcome to all of you and everybody in the chat room to our congregation. Welcome. Uh, we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and we'll begin tonight with verse 24. Before we do, though, let me just say to the chat room, let me see if we got, do we have any um, moderators in there yet? Oh, Hendrix is there. Bless all of you. Well, back at you, Hendrix. Whatever it is, bounces off of me and goes back to you. <laughs> Blessings to Hendrix. Okay. And uh, Darlene also is another moderator there. So thank you for being there. Thank you to everybody. So um, uh, remember, in the chat room, uh, there are some people uh, that uh, maybe you forget. Uh, but I guess I have to keep reminding you that uh, if you do want to get our attention um, and you have a question or a comment that you want us to respond to, as long as it's relevant and it pertains to the Bible study, uh, we want to address it. But you need to put it in all caps. Otherwise, I'm just not going to uh, notice. Uh, so they say that putting in all caps is rude. It's shouting. But in this case, shout it out to me, okay? All right, let's get started, but say, Sister Renee, you want to say hi to everybody? Hey, beloved saints. Hi, good to see you guys tonight. Um, I really love this book. I love that we're going through all the Pauline epistles. Start out going through, you know, various uh, famous sermons, some which were fantastic and others that were just horrific. <laughs> uh, but I really like uh, the Pauline epistles. There's uh, Brother Luke's even studied how Paul's Paul's writing style and what was uh, common writing styles in the first wow. century. It's pretty interesting stuff. So I'm happy to be here with you guys tonight. All right. Thank you. And we also have, of course, with us, Brother Cripps. What do you say? Hey, I'm happy to be here as well. And uh, I agree with what Renee said. Uh, we're, we get a chance to see a lot of the same uh, patterns Paul uses. One is uh, repeating himself with the same information said in different ways in order to get the point across because as we've talked about many times um, he needed to do that back then and uh, it, it seems like to me that God knew that we would need that uh, the, that uh, information repeated in that way for us today uh, because we seem to be um, some people at least arguing over the same stuff but I'm happy to be here excited about another uh, Pauline Epistle study and for the fellowship and also for the uh, conversation and uh, say hello to everyone in the chat. I'm glad to see you guys and uh, talk more soon. All right. And brother, um, uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one that missed you on Sunday night. So I know you're going through a, some kind of a change. Uh, what is the status of your your uh, your program now? Uh, it's just in, in kind of a hold. I'm just in a hold pattern because there's a lot of uh, things that I'm that need my focus a little bit more than uh, doing a broadcast. I um, haven't given up on it or anything like that. It just um, uh, just there are, there are things I'm in the middle of a quite quite a lot of transition and uh, it's taking up a lot of my time and energy and focus and um, it seemed like in some ways it was even a blessing the way that everything happened when it did. Uh, you know, God can see everything when we can't. And uh, it just it just seemed like it was it was perfect timing to have uh, the way things were to the end and uh, just haven't haven't begun anything new yet. Uh, but um, there'll be something coming soon. Mm hmm. Well, all things work for the good for those who love the Lord. Mm. And you can quote me on that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go to the scriptures. We're KJV firstest. So we will read it first in the KJV, verse 24, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Let no man seek his own, but every man an another's wealth. Sister Renee? Yeah, he's uh, telling people to not be concerned with 
what you need, but the needs of others. So when he said, it sounds kind of weird if you take it like just on that verse, you know, don't seek your own wealth, seek another man's wealth. He's not saying covet that guy's stuff, but let's uh, seek for the benefit of an, another. Let's think on the cares and needs of others' wealth or growth uh, as opposed to our own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's uh, he's definitely changing subjects now. This is totally different than what he'd been talking about the the beginning of the chapter. So uh, let me read it in the Amplified for Brother Cripps. Let no one then seek his own good and advantage and profit, but rather each one of the other, let him seek the welfare of his neighbor. Yeah, we've touched on this before, the idea of who your neighbor is. I think it was just last week, you know, who's your neighbor? Is, is our family our neighbor? And the answer to that is yes, everyone's our neighbor. So. Um, just in this verse, in verse 24, uh, Renee, Renee hit on it. There's not a whole lot more to say about it, but he's saying, don't just focus on your own, your own profit, the, the uh, advantage, the way that it's phrased here, um, advantage and profit, but rather each one of the other, let him seek the welfare of his neighbor. So, um, gosh, wouldn't it be great if people actually lived that way, if they were, everyone was concerned about everyone else and not so much themselves? Uh, it's a difficult thing. It's a lot to ask in today's world, you know, for you to be concerned about how your neighbors are doing. And, uh, you know, it's not saying neglect. It's not saying neglect your own needs. But then the other point that just come into mind is if God's the one that's taking care of all your needs, then what, what do you have to worry about? If he's going to take care of your needs and you're worried about or not worried about, but if you're seeking uh, helping your neighbor, uh, then what concerns would you have if you were to live like that? I'll have to think more about that. <laughs> yeah. Brother Luke? Uh, yes. Do, do, I know I've told you this, but I wanted to give you the picture. It was a cartoon I saw one time. It had a married couple, and they both had really long spoons, and there was a full table of food in front of them. But they both died starving to death. If they'd have just fed each other, they would have lived, but they were so busy trying to get this long spoon in their own mouth, worry about their own needs, that they ended up dying of starvation when they should have just cared for each other's needs and they both would have had more than enough. Yeah, that's a, a, a perfect, perfect picture of this situation. That, But, um, you know, we were talking before the program and I don't want to go off into this uh, been, uh, to make it into a negative thing, but uh, we are greatly lacking in this verse here in terms of letting this play out in our lives. Now, I, when I say we and our lives, um, maybe I should, I, I know that there, there's a lot of people I know. I think that the, the, you, uh, Renee, Matthias, uh, uh, Cripps, and, and I'm sure those many in the, in the congregation here, uh, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't apply to you. But I have seen so much um, behavior by professing Christians that are contrary to this. Everything is, I think I was talking about this on the last Friday program about being self-centered, uh, you know. Uh, and uh, I think I said JOY, J-O-Y, the acronym means Jesus, others, yourself. And this is really what it's, and Jesus said, Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. So really, if you want to have joy and peace and, and really please God, and, and then you will you will make Jesus your priority, and then others, that's J-O, and then the Y is yourself. You need to put yourself last. Now, do I do that perfectly? No, but I'll boast a little. I do it pretty well compared to my, the olden days. Uh, so, you know, if we if we uh, surrender our will over to the Lord, at, at, not to get saved, but after we get saved, the Holy Spirit wants to transform our, our mind and our desires. And, and then of course that will result in changed behavior. And uh, if we surrender over and, and let the Holy Spirit transform us, then we are likely to change in this direction. How well we will we end up doing it? Uh, I guess that'll all vary. But um, uh, 
putting other people first, try to serve your neighbor. Um, I, I, I saw uh, this somewhere. I don't know, but maybe it was some secular show on counseling or something, but they were talking about depression. And they said, one of the best cures for depression is find someone else with a problem and help them. Uh, <laughs> if you're getting depressed or you've got your own worries and your own problems, if you really don't, if you want to get over that, then find someone else with a problem, get busy helping someone else and uh, try that. Try that and see if that doesn't uh, change everything for you. Uh, I do see if we have a footnote in the NABRE, so let's look at that. Uh, it says, uh, for verse 23 and 24, the footnote is, uh, he repeats in the context of this new problem, the slogans of liberty from 1 Corinthians six twelve, with uh, similar qualifications. Liberty is not merely an individual perfection, nor an end in itself, but is to be used for the common good. The language in 1 Corinthians 10, 24 recalls the descriptions of Jesus's self-emptying in, in Philippians 2. I, can't, I don't recall this, the self-emptying of Jesus in Philippians 2. Maybe someone knows off the top of their head, but uh, yeah, that's the footnote. But of course, that relates back to verse 23. And we mentioned last week that verse 23 is uh, repeated. It was the same thing was stated earlier. And, and we talked quite a bit about that. And that, that's interesting. So you can go back to last week's study and, 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 and consider what we said on that. Uh, okay, any more on uh, verse 24 before we move on? Renee or Cripps? Nope, that's good. Okay. All right, let's go to verse 25 in the KJV. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no question for conscience sake. And verse 26 says, for the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. Brother Cripps? The world and they that dwell therein. That's uh, from Psalms, I believe. Uh, the earth is the Lord's. Um, absolutely. Um, hmm. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry. I lost my uh, lost my screen for a second. Just a minute. There we go. Um, what's ever sold in shambles? I'm not sure what that means. Sold in Meat market. It's just like a general meat market. Oh, okay. Asking no questions for conscience sake. Um, yeah. So, so don't make big fuss about, uh, whatever you, whatever you get, whatever is sold in the shambles, don't make a big fuss about it. Uh, eat it without asking questions. Um, and that would, it seems like that ties into what he's saying earlier about the, uh, meat being offered to idols and things like that. But the 26, that's, I'm not sure why he switches to that. Oh, I think because he's saying that, Everything's the Lord's anyways. All, all things are of the Lord, for the earth is Lord's and the fullness thereof. And then in Psalms, the verse continues, the world and they that dwell therein. Um, so, I, I, yeah, I feel like he's tying that into what he said for, furthermore in the verse. That's all I have on that one. You're muted, Brother Luke. You're muted, bro. Yeah, I make more sense when I'm muted, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to read it in the Amplified for uh, Renee in verse 25 and 26 reads, As to meat offered to idols, eat anything that is sold in the meat market without raising any question or investigating on the grounds of conscience or scruples. For the whole earth is the Lord's and everything that is in it. Yeah, uh, bro uh, brother Jason got it. Uh, the reason he's mentioning the whole earth is the Lord's, and to ask to not even ask about it because see, whatsoever's not of faith is sin. So if you go in looking for sinful things, oh, was this offered to an idol? Because if I eat off the idols, I'm sinning against God, and now you're eating what do they call it? This says damnation to yourself, but it's like condemnation. It's uh, better to not even ask because everything belongs to the Lord, as brother Jason was saying, and everything. And he gives us, we can receive it with thanksgiving, and he sanctifies it. He makes it holy. He blesses it because he is the God. And so 
if we don't even ask, you know, the shambles was just like a local meat market. So you, it was just, uh, it wasn't necessarily like a kosher place. It was just like people would sell the meats in the market. So um, if you don't ask, you can't be condemned or question it or any of that. You just, it doesn't matter. Don't even, it doesn't matter because everything belongs to the Lord. Um, so if you don't know about it, you can't feel condemned because God is the power. He's the only God. So it, if they offered it to their God, as long as you don't know about it, that's all he's saying. He's like, because our God can sanctify anything, make anything holy because it all belongs to him. It doesn't matter who they offered it to. Uh, it, it belongs to God. You know, they're just uh, counterfeiters. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, I I think that uh, this point is repeated so so much by Paul. Yeah. It, it seems to be uh, something that is a, a a problem that's probably quite common. Yeah. And so he's really trying to drive the point home. And so we should all listen. Listen, congregation. Listen, everybody. Let's not be legalistic about these things. Yeah. Come on, it's just um, um, Paul. Paul explained it very well, and uh, you shouldn't. We shouldn't be confused about this anymore. So, don't number one. Don't impose these legalistic things on others, and you're free too. Yeah, you don't need to impose any legalism on yourself either. Okay. Brother, brother Luke, I don't want to. I, I don't want to go off on a tangent here, but could this apply to the uh, holidays that people celebrate as well? Oh yeah, yeah. He he does say the same thing about some people will recognize one day as more yep. important than another day, but he says that we're all free in that regard also. So whether whether it's a you know you want to worship on a different day, you want to recognize a day as a, a special day mm -hmm. uh, for some reason. The, the key to all of this, and I, I would even say. The, the subject of Roman Catholicism it comes up quite often, and sure. and people like to, uh, you know, try to figure out are they really Christians? Are they really saved? And I've yet to find one that uh, believes the gospel saves them. They they believe the facts that are correct that Jesus died for their sins and he was buried and he was raised from the dead, but they don't think that's how you get saved. Right. So there, that's where the problem lies. Yep. But if you were a Roman Catholic and you actually believe the gospel and you get saved and you wanted to stay in the church there because you like the ceremonies and the rituals and the yeah. beautiful chapels and all, all that stuff. There's a lot of beauty in that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, Paul would, I think, agree. That's okay if that's what you want to do. As long as you're putting no faith in it and you're not look, thinking that this is a part of uh, getting getting your salvation. Right. Agreed. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's look at the... Uh, KJV again, uh, it was 25 and 26. So now we'll go to verse 27. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast and ye be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you eat, asking no question for conscience sake. Uh, Sister Renee. Yeah, um, I was thinking maybe the next three could, no, we can just do, we can do them separate. The, uh, here he's saying if, if there's an unbeliever, you have the opportunity and someone that hasn't heard about Jesus invites you to their home and you're able to go, go and don't ask. Don't ask, are you offering this to your household God? Are you, do don't, because we don't want to uh, set up an, uh, an offense to them so that they don't hear it because the whole point of, of fellowshipping is to get people saved. Paul makes it clear that everything we do, why we act the way we do, why we show the love of Christ, why we live holy lives, it's all so that some might be saved. So, uh, so if somebody invites you to their house, they're not a believer, don't even ask about their meat. Apparently this was a huge thing. Everybody offered their, they bless their food to whatever pagan god they worship, their household god or whatever. Mm. So uh, don't even ask. Again, he, he confirms everything belongs to God. 
Don't even ask. Just go there. Be a good guest. Because we don't want to go in there and offend anybody or assault their conscience. Because it's already common that Jews were looked upon as people who thought they were better than other people. Yeah. Because you couldn't even enter a Gentile's house because you were defiled. You weren't allowed to eat with them. Mm-hmm. And so people took that as they're they think they're better than everybody else. Yeah. And so we don't we don't want to give that impression either. So um, it's it's all saying you are free, but don't do things for your own sake. Whatever you do, do it for another's sake so that you can be in service to God so that they can believe. It's all about that. That's the whole motivation. All the behavior should be selfless, self-sacrificial, and in care of another's feelings before your own. Wow. Wow. Okay, I remember to turn my microphone back on. How's my fan? Is my fan uh, creating any problem? Let me know if it does. I don't hear it. Okay, good. All right, Brother Cripps, let me read that verse in the uh, uh, Amplified. That's verse uh, uh, 27. In case one of the unbelievers invites you to a meal and you want to go, eat whatever is served to you without examining into its source because of conscience or, or scruples. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I like what Renee said, and I like what you said too, uh, Brother Luke, and I, I, this this keeps coming back in my mind, you know, what Renee said uh, about, um, you know, not being selfish and not focusing on yourself and all that. And it just keeps coming back into my mind, these people with, with the holidays, like the people that quit doing Christmas and they, you know, think it's pagan and they go on this rampage to get other people and attack and accuse other people who, uh, like me, who have no problem uh, having a tree and listen to some Nat King Cole uh, around the Christmas time. Uh, uh, it, it's it's something that I enjoy. Um, but re- but the people that are against it, they they seem to you know be blowing this huge trumpet. Everyone needs to stop, and it goes against what Renee's saying. You know, in in her description, and I, I realize he's talking about eating, but it's also the. King James Version says feast. So if you're going to a Christmas feast and someone's criticizing for that, they're they're not being selfless. They're focusing on what they've quit doing and they're trying to put that on you and and put you under the yoke of their own bondage, their their own, uh, as Brother Luke said, being legalist about everything. Um, But again, he's making the point, uh, as Brother Luke pointed out, uh, he's really, really pounding this point home about the meat and the meal and, and not making a big fuss about it, not asking. Um, just eat it. If you're invited over to the unbeliever's house and he invites you to a meal and you want to go, eat whatever's served to you. Don't make a big deal out of it. And the same thing would apply to if you're a vegetarian. If you're a vegetarian, you go to someone, an unbeliever's house, and they're eating meat, you know, I, I, it may put you in a different situation, but you, you would probably know ahead of time. Uh, I don't know why a person put themselves into that place, but um, yeah, I'm I'm glad he's sitting on these things again because people are still arguing about it today. So it makes sense. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Um, I'm a little bit uh, undecided uh, to answer a question. In the chat room. Um, hmm. Yeah. Um, let me just say that um, when we were on First Corinthians chapter five, if you did not see that study, I hope everybody will go back and watch that. That um, had a great impact on me. Uh, I, I, I've done a lot of things for 33 years as a Christian, and and, uh, and uh, then when I, I read that chapter, I was convicted that I was wrong in the way I was being too tolerant for a certain kind of bad behavior. 
Now, matter of fact, I was talking about some of these things earlier today with a friend and, and uh, you know, um, you know, different doctrines, you know, we give liberty uh, as long as we agree on the core doctrines. Uh, but there, there's behavior. And if you read chapter five, um, we're told that uh, there's certain kind of behavior that we we need to put our foot down and say that this is not going to be allowed. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of different things that would be on that list, but railing is one and or gossiping and uh, stirring up strife and discord. So all I can say is that if, if someone in our congregation decides that they want to uh, go elsewhere and and then refer to all the brethren and sisters or any of the brethren or sister in here in this congregation, whether it's the people in the panel or the congregation in the chat room, uh, I will not tolerate anybody here going elsewhere and slandering the rest of us, gossiping and saying things that there are very, uh, uh, you know, first of all, false, and secondly, just uncalled for and, 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 and hateful. So my policy is that uh, if anybody makes a comment uh, that is insulting to my friends and my congregation, any of you, if someone was to make comments about anybody here in the chat room right now, I take that personally and I say, that person is not welcome. So that's the answer to the question. Uh, all right, let's, uh, uh, let's go back to the, the scriptures and uh, back to KJV verse uh, 28. Okay, Renee, you said these are the several verses here. They're kind of all connected. It says, but if any man say unto you, this is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for his sake that showed it and for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I'm going to read 29 also. Conscience, I say, not thine own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? Crips, it's your turn, but can you sort that out in the KJV? Sure. Okay, um, go ahead. Yeah. So again, he is he is hitting on the same thing. And, I, and as you said, I hope people will listen. I hope people will listen because if he's pounding on something over and over and over again, he wants people to get it. And I think you're right, Brother Luke. This, was, this must have happened a lot for him to put it uh, put it in here over and over and over again. So this, the the meat being offered to idols, and then he doubles down on the same verse from Psalms, for the earth is Lord's and the fullness thereof, and uh, the world and they that dwell therein, everything. He's established it upon the seas and the floods, and uh, it, it, it's a great it's a great chapter. I wish I remembered uh, the number so people could go look at it, but. Um, uh, so then the the other part, 29, I say not thine own, but the other for why is, why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? That, that last sentence is exactly what I'm talking about. People looking at other people and saying, oh, they're doing this or they're doing that. Or, and uh, why, why is that happening? Why, why, why are other people being judged by what someone else decides to do for themselves? To me, that's what he's saying. He's, he's saying, not only for the unbeliever whose house you go into, if you choose to, don't ask a bunch of questions for your own conscience sake. Um, everything belongs to the Lord. Everything belongs to the Lord. Everything belongs to the Lord. It's not uh, based on some other person's opinion, someone that, that hears that you've gone to an unbeliever's house and you ate something that you shouldn't eat or ate something that they know is sacrificed to idols. And, you know, you have liberty. You have liberty in Christ. We have liberty in Christ. And that liberty has not gone away since Paul's time. We still have liberty. Um, and as he said, and, and we've talked about in other studies, yeah, don't knowingly go in front of someone and eat something uh, when, when you know that that person has a particular problem with it for, for their sake. Don't do it. Um, but, you know, in, the, in this case, he's just hitting on the same point. And we, sh we should not flaunt our liberty around, but the fact is we do have liberty. And for us, we don't need to get all bent out of shape when other people accuse us, point the finger at us and scoff at us because we're doing something that they 
they don't agree with. Um, the earth is the Lord's. Everything belongs to him. And for a believer, that's enough for me. Yeah. All right. Well, well done, even though the KJV is not as easy to understand for me. But, Renee, I'm going to read 28 and 29 in the Amplified before you comment. Okay. It says, but if someone tells you this has been offered in sacrifice to an idol, do not eat it out of consideration for the person who informed you and for conscience's sake. I mean, for the sake of his conscience, not yours. Mm. Uh, do not eat it. For why should another man's scruples apply to me and my liberty of action be determined by his conscience? Yeah, so he gives all the examples here. The first one is you're at an unbeliever's house. Don't even ask. Go ahead and eat it. Then the second the second scenario is somebody comes to you and says, hey, this meat's offered to idols. And it's offending him personally. Well, then don't eat it. So he's saying what well, everything you do should be based on others and how they feel because you're free. You're free. You're not in bondage to this conscious consciousness of, of fear about what you eat and what you don't eat because it's what comes out of your out of you that defiles you, not what you put in. So uh, he's saying either way, if they offer it to you and they do eat meat over the idols, eat it. If they are concerned that it is offered to idols and they don't want to eat it, don't eat it. So, and then the hypothetical question is, uh, so he's saying, okay, now that I've told you this, you're probably saying, hey, uh, how come conscience, I say not thine own, but of the other, for why is my liberty, why is my freedom judged on another man's conscience? Like, that's not fair to me. How come I, he's like, because we do this for them and for the Lord. Everything is for him. That's why we eat according to other people's conscience. You are not in the bondage of fear and law. So you have that freedom. But we do it. We, we Our response to the situation regarding meat offered idols to eat or not eat is based on the people around us and how they will feel. Because the whole point is not to offend so that they can come to the truth of the gospel and be saved and meet Jesus. That's the whole point. So that's that's kind of like a hypothetical. Why why is my freedom judged based on somebody else's conscience? Why 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 do I have to act my actions be dictated by what somebody else thinks? Mm. It's for it's for God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it all, all of this really uh, points to the uh, this J O Y concept, and, and that uh, we're told uh, we are supposed to have certain priorities. Uh, the natural priority is self. We put ourselves first, and sometimes maybe if you have someone you really love, like your wife or your child or something, then then you might think uh, naturally you might. You know, care about their needs even before yours. But we're told in a broad, cross the board statement about all humanity, we're supposed to put other people ahead of ourselves. And of course, uh, Jesus comes even before them. Uh, and again, and you know, the, the better we are able to do that, and we're not, it's not a natural thing to do. So what are you going to do? Are you going to work at making those changes? Are you? Are you going to work at it? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, uh, from my own experience uh, and, and reports I've gotten from others, is that doesn't work very well, uh, trying to make these changes. Uh, all you, all we, I have a saying that uh, before I got saved, I did whatever I wanted to do. And a lot of things I wanted to do are uh, pretty are revolting. If, you, if I was to confess everything to everybody, you know, I might even be, you might be shocked. Um, so, uh, those things really, I don't do them anymore, but I didn't make a conscious decision and work it, tr trying to make those changes and get those things out of my life and go a different direction. And, um, the, the Lord changed my desires. Um, so I wanted to do whatever I wanted to do. I did it, but guess what? Today, 
the, that rule still applies. I still do whatever I want to do, <laughs> but the things I want to do are different. Not because I was able to repent, and change directions, and turn away from those things and go a different way. No, not because I did it. The Lord changed my desire. So I still do whatever my desires are, but my desire now is to spend time with other believers or in the scriptures or things that, you know, uh, so, so if we do these things, then uh, this this kind of a uh, what Paul is telling us to do in this uh, these verses here is he's basically saying, you know, just be, maybe you would want to eat this food. Maybe you actually really like that particular food, but you shouldn't be making a decision whether you're going to eat it or not eat it based upon how much it would please you. You, you, you should make your decision based upon uh, how it's going to affect the other people. Easier said than done until until the Lord changes our desires and changes our heart. Right. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, let's go back to the KJV and look at verse uh, um, 30. And... Uh, yeah, so Brother Cripps, I think you go first on this one. Uh, it, for if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that for which I give thanks? I think yeah. it's, actually, I think it's Renee's turn to go. It is Renee's turn, yeah. yeah I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, again, it's probably coming from the legalistic Judaizers. Uh, because he, uh, some people weren't observing the uh, food laws, you know, and so he's he's making a point here. Why, if I am not offending anyone, I'm not offending the guy that doesn't care about meat over titles, and I'm not offending the guy that is offended by it. I'm doing it all for others yeah. so that Christ might be glorified. Mm -hmm. So why am I being? Why is evil spoken about me? When I am doing something completely selfless, I am in God's grace. I'm not justified by what I eat or what I abstain from eating, mm -hmm. but I'm considering all others, God and my fellow brethren. I'm considering their feelings above my own. So why, if I am thanking God, as uh, Jason pointed out, he, points, he, he quotes the Psalms twice, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, if everything belongs to God, I am not offending anybody, but caring about God and caring about others before myself. And I'm receiving whatever is put before me with thanksgiving. Why am, is evil being spoken of about me? Who am I harming? What am I doing evil? Because I'm sure people were legalistic. It's the same thing with the holidays. People go, oh, you, December 25th is a pagan holiday. And if you do that, you're worshiping the devil. And they, you know, they really just go all the way there with the legalism if uh, you want to celebrate one day do it unto the lord if you don't want to celebrate it a day don't do it unto the lord whatever you do do it unto him you are under uh god's grace you are free you are free and uh, so uh i i'm pretty sure there i'm sure there was a lot of uh judaism and legalism going on with their food laws because yeah. he sure talks about it a lot yeah you know mm -hmm. Yes, it must have been very common for him to mention it so many times. Okay, Brother Cripps, I'm going to read verse 30 in the Amplified. If I partake of my food with thankfulness, why am I accused and spoken evil of because of that for which I give thanks? Wow, isn't that a great point? I mean, uh, his word tells us to be thankful and everything give thanks, you know, and, and uh, just be thankful. Um, and with Thanksgiving coming up, we have a national holiday that <laughs> we can celebrate to be thankful. And, and for me, uh, on Thanksgiving, yes, I am, as a believer, thanking God for all the things that he's given me, all the blessings that he's given me. And I do that every day. I'm not just waiting for one special day. But regardless of what anyone else would look from the outside and, and criticize and say, well, don't you know that thousands of 
of natives were slaughtered. You know, the, the, the true meaning of Thanksgiving means slaughter. And there's all these things. If you, if you have an interest in seeing what people are saying about the different holidays, you can look them up, look them up for themselves. But it's just all this contention and anger and, and guilt and shame put on other people for deciding to um, uh, celebrate a Thanksgiving or Christmas or Easter or anything else saying it's a pagan holiday and um it just drives me crazy if someone doesn't want to celebrate thanksgiving because thousands of natives were slaughtered three or four hundred years ago and that means something to you and you're doing that for your own conscience sake then don't don't celebrate thanksgiving if you don't want to celebrate christmas because you feel like it was a pagan holiday at some point um and, and you don't want to do it then don't do it just if i'm thankful for for that there's even a celebration of Christ's birth, even though if it wasn't at uh, in December. I mean, you know, people people uh, figure out when he was born, and it wasn't in December. That's fine. He wasn't born in December. I'm celebrating. If I celebrate Christmas, I'm celebrating it because Emmanuel, God with us, he came into the world, and it is a celebration, and I choose to celebrate it. But I I get a lot of cri criticism about that because you know people focus on holiday uh either way whatever holiday you celebrate as a believer or don't celebrate do it with thanksgiving either way and i believe that's what paul's saying you, you know again he's talking about food but i believe it bleeds into these other things and it was a big deal at that time and it's still a big deal you have all these hebrew rooters that are going back under they're putting themselves back under the law and they want everyone else to do it and they're saying that we're not real believers or they're they're saying we're missing out on on the on the the true gospel which is uh to to live under the law of the hebrews and i i, I i'm not buying it for one i'm just going to continue to be thankful i'm going to take paul's advice be thankful and of course if it's going to offend someone else I, I i can celebrate on my own i don't have to flaunt my liberty in front of other people uh, i can think about them before myself in that situation for sure it's good advice mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Paul's full of good advice, except Brother Cripps says he's wrong about something. What was that you say he's wrong about? I, I'm <laughs> saying he's wrong. I, I'm not saying he's wrong necessarily. I'm saying that I do not agree because he's never been married. That you can't have a ministry and and be married like there like there's it, it's either you stay single and do everything for the Lord or you be married and 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 don't. I mean, like there's there's a balance. Yeah. Uh, that's that's the one thing I disagree with. But yeah. he's Paul. He has uh, books in God's Word, and I've got nothing. So <laughs> I I think that you're you're taking his words a little bit too far. I I, I think he would, <laughs> I think he would tell you say, Brother Cripps, no, that's not what I mean. It man, just like all these other people who were putting words in my mouth. Now Brother Cripps is doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so he's saying, yeah, you're 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 going to be more free if you're not encumbered with a spouse to go full time and dedicate yourself to the Lord. But if you do have a spouse, it doesn't mean you can't be in ministry and you can't do it. It's just that you've got uh, your spouse and your children, your family obligations that have to be, or uh, uh, you know, also uh, sure. dealt with too. Sure. So, um, but I, I, uh, Victoria wrote something and I repeated it about uh, every day is a Jesus day and uh, I love that whole concept me too that's people, great you know people uh, they want to get make a big deal about uh, you know two days a year Christmas and Easter matter of fact I went to a church once and, and uh, matter of fact I was pretty much like that at that time and uh, what they call a C and E person a C and E Christian uh, Christian and Easter that's the only time you go to a church. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but um, so it's, 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 there's a lot of people that the only time really they think about Jesus are, is twice a year. And then there's others. Well, well, they, at least they do think about him 52 times a year, but just on Sundays, that's it. Right. But yeah, I, I believe that every day is Christmas. Every day is Easter. Every day is, uh, what's the other one? Um, Whatever. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving yeah. Easter, and, and uh, Christmas. 
Yeah, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, I'm glad you said that. That was the other one I wanted to mention is that uh, we, we have one day set aside to act. To, we're gonna be thankful today. Yeah. How, how ridiculous. <laughs> Why are we thankful like that every day? Come we on. Should be. We should be. In everything, give thanks is what he says. In everything, yeah. give thanks. Yeah. For this is the will of God. Yeah. Okay, so let me read uh, that verse. Um, oh, I think I read it in both. Let's go to verse 31 in the KJV. And it says, uh, Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all things to the glory of God. I think that we, we hadn't read the verse, but we already covered that point. So let me read verse 32. And I'll, I'll read 32 and 33 since it's, they're connected. Um, Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Mm. Uh, is it Cripps's turn to go first? I think so. Uh, yeah, sure. Whether therefore you eat or drink. Okay, so now he's getting to the point of it. Do it all for the glory of God. That's what we should all be doing anyway. And and as he capitalized on the verse from Psalms more than once, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Everything is his. So he should be getting the glory anyway. Any food that you eat, if you have food in front of you, it's from the Lord. Um, a lot, a lot of people think they work on their own and, you know, I, I pulled myself up by my own bootstraps and I, I've got this great job that I worked in. I did that, um, on my own. No, you didn't. Uh, you, you were blessed to be in an area or have contacts to be able to get a job that you, that you have. God decides, uh, you know, what we have. Um, he provides everything for us. He cares about us. So all the glory goes to him. We should be uh, giving it back to him where uh, where we can, which is, in my mind, every day. Every day, thanking him for what we have. Hmm. Um, all glory goes to him. Um, give none offense, neither Jews nor Gentiles, nor the Church of God. Um, again, he's he's saying, don't just don't be offended wherever you wherever you stand, Jew or Gentile. Don't be offended. And then 33, even as I please all men and all things, not seek my own profit, but the profit of many. Now, the, the point is at the end that they may be saved. So a lot of these things that he's saying, you know, don't offend other people. You know, if they have a problem with you eating the meat, I'm, don't do it. Don't do it in front of them. And he's made that point several times. And it's not to smear liberty in anybody's face. It's that maybe they'll maybe they'll come around. Maybe the Holy Spirit's working in their life and by them knowing that you have have liberty and you feel free to eat what you want, but you're not doing it for their sake and they see that, that's a witness to them in some way. And the Holy Spirit may be working through that event uh, to reach them. Um, certainly to, to the unbelievers that you're, you know, in the scenario that you're going over their house and you're not making a big deal about about the food and not, not uh, causing a ruckus and you're, they, they see your liberty, and that might be something that leads them to, to being saved or asking questions about your liberty as compared to someone else's, why you feel it's okay to eat certain things while they, they've they heard other people that make a big deal out, out of it. Um, everything is the point, the glory of God. Everything is the point of, um, uh, of uh, not getting in the way of people being saved. In fact, doing as much as we can to be a help in that area, being the hands and feet of God and being salt and light to the to the earth. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, let me address uh, Church for the Truth uh, in the chat room here before Renee tell, talks about these verses. Uh, uh, I don't uh, I, I don't see why you are uh, offended by anybody in the chat room. Uh, I, I think the po the point is that you're asking where in the Bible does it say to celebrate Christmas and Easter and these pagan holidays? Uh, no one's telling you that uh, you have to agree with other anybody else in the chat room on this. Uh, you're free to be against it. 
And that's what this whole part of scripture is is is, is about that yeah. we give each other freedom on these things. If if you want to say absolutely, I don't want to have anything to do with those holidays. Uh, they're not biblical, and that that's that's good. Good for yeah. you. Uh, we don't we don't condemn that. Right. But on the other hand, uh, for someone who does want to celebrate those, you and I, we we should not be condemning them. That's what this the teaching that Paul's as it's all about that we do have this liberty and that we should not be dividing o over these kinds of questions. Renee? I get condemned for not condemning people. Right. So here's my thing, you guys. I am so free in Christ and I feel like I don't want anybody not coming to Jesus because they think that means they're not allowed to dress up on Halloween. They're not allowed to celebrate Christmas. They're not allowed to do all these fun things that they think are fun. Now, now they're going to think, well, I associate Jesus with all the fun taken out of my life. Huh. And so I don't want to put that kind of religious bondage on anyone. We need to, we need to get them saved and then God can deal with them according to the conscience. When I was first really strong in my faith is about 12 years ago. I fell into all kinds of legalistic. I wasn't going to celebrate Christmas and I wasn't going to, I mean, I got into the Hebrew roots. I mean, everything, because I was so zealous for God. And that's what happens. You can sway to and fro with everyone to doctrine. But I finally realized I am free. If I want to do it, I can. And I don't feel condemned. If I don't want to do it, I won't. Because everything is for God. Amen. And when I say I'm going to enjoy my life, I'm going to, everything that God gives me, I'm going to praise him for it. Thank you for this. Thank you for cold water. Thank you for the moonlight. I enjoy everything in my life because it gives glory and honor to him. Mm -hmm. But people think uh, being godly means to have a sour look on your face and then you got to judge and be like that. That is the last thing that's going to bring anybody to Jesus. Amen. So, uh, people are shocked when they find out how much I love the Lord, how much scripture I know, because they associate Christians with self-righteous, religious, condemning people. That's why I give so much freedom on these issues. I don't condemn anybody that does it, and I don't condemn people that don't do it. As Brother Luke said, you have to follow your own conscience, right? I am uh, very strong in the faith, in my freedom. I have the freedom to do it if I feel like it. And I will answer to no one but God about it. Uh, although I get a lot of people condemning me and uh, exposing me, I answer to the Lord. We're not to judge another man's servant. And these issues, you are free to choose, like Brother Luke said. That is our freedom. You're free to choose to do it or not to do it. I just, I find that it's always better to not impose my view on others in places that we are given freedom. Yep. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, uh, Church for the, the Truth, um, I only brought it up because uh, I, you say you weren't offended, but I, I thought maybe you were offended because uh, you said that you were going to leave and because someone would probably block you because uh, because of your position, but no one was going to block here. No one was upset. So that, that's the only reason I wanted to address it. Uh, you can express your viewpoint on it, and we'll all consider it. That's all we really do here. As I say, everybody, let's all share our viewpoints and consider each other's points of view. That's all. We're trying yeah. to figure, we're trying to figure it out together. I mean, uh, I don't. Uh, I, I might know more than some of you here. Maybe some of you know a lot more than me, but uh, I've been trying for 33 yeah. years to understand this book and uh, any help I can get, I appreciate. But uh, uh, I've learned that uh, if we put our heads together and try to figure it out together, we're more likely to, if we don't even come up with the right answer, at least uh, it's a it's a good exercise. We're told to do it, to study and to, uh, and to uh, what was the Brian? What did the Brians do? Go in the scriptures and see if it's so, you know? Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's go to the, uh, now, uh, we finished, uh, this chapter. So let's go to the next chapter. Let me see. Huh? 
This is not, let me do it here. Give me a second. It doesn't, okay, there it is. Okay, I got it on the chapter 11 now. Hey, that last verse, Brother Luke. Yeah. It just summarized what all of us were saying. The whole point of all of this, whether it's holidays or eating, it says, even as I please all men in all things, like James is talking about, faith without works is dead. We need to be justified, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they might be saved. Mm -hmm. That's that's our motivation for everything we do. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what I'm thinking. I think I confused myself going off on that tangent. <laughs> I hadn't even I haven't even discussed those last three verses. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I missed that part. I thought we were kind of I know the other part about why am I condemned for why am I judged on Yeah. So let's uh be Crips another man's uh, liberty, but Renee, you, within the conversation of the holiday. Yeah, if you have anything else to say about the last three verses, Crips or Renee, go ahead before we go to chapter eleven. No, I'm good, sir. Yeah, that was just my point. The whole chapter is talking about that. that yeah. Everything is about That's that. Good. Yeah, that, that is a, a kind of the, he, he's kind of summed up, this is the whole point. And that is, look, our priority should be not ourselves and, and satisfying all of our needs and desires, but put ourselves a second or third and put other people ahead of us. And what's the biggest need everybody has? Well, obviously we want to make sure that they're fed and that they're, and that they have shelter and they're clothed. However, <laughs> they're, is a giant religion in the world that everybody knows about that works real hard on doing charitable things, raising money and doing good works. And it's called Roman Catholicism. But I, I, I'm amazed by how much effort they put into doing these good feeding and clothing and the needy. And yet all that amounts to nothing if we don't uh, tell them the gospel. That's that. Uh, I would much rather, um, if I didn't know the gospel and I was hungry, and, and then I was able to learn the gospel and get eternal life, I would value that far more than someone that fed me. And okay, they fed me. Now that filled my stomach for a day, but uh, now I'm still lost. That's really the priority. And that's what he says there in that last verse. All right, let's go to uh, verse. One in chapter 11 in the KJV it says, uh, uh oh, uh oh, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Renee, uh -oh. Renee uh, whose turn is to go first now? I'll, I'll let Renee go first, even if it's yeah. not her yeah, turn. Go ahead, Renee. Okay. <laughs> yeah, why, why are y'all saying, uh oh? <laughs> Uh, because because of the uh, uh, the uh, hyper D's and the, the Paul Onlyus. Yeah. Oh. This, this is their one of their pet verses. Be ye followers of me, even as I. Okay, but that's not like just in general speaking. He's talking about uh, in the because again, as you mentioned many times, Luke, it, there's no chapter and verse in the original letters in the original script. So. What he's doing is he's breaking down all these questions they have. Well, what about if they're they're unbelievers and they offer their meat idols, or what if they're offended by idol, idols uh, and they're like Jews or something and they do want to eat kosher? What about that? Okay, so he's saying everything we're doing is so people will get saved and never be offended by your behavior. Okay, because you're free, and so with that continuing thought. Be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. So he's like, just take my example on these issues. It's it's a it's a way of saying, just follow my lead. As he confirmed earlier, I became all things to all men that I may gain some. Yeah. Uh, the context is, is to to follow Paul on these things, to to watch him in these situations. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. And he will yeah. lead by example, obviously. You know, um, uh, when I made my uh, videos, my playlist uh, refuting uh, Paul Onlyism, uh, all of the doctrines and all of the verses that they 
uh, espouse that they rely upon, uh, I, I, I address every single one of them. And of course, this is this is one of their verses that they that they use to elevate Paul above other apostles and even above Jesus. That you're to follow Jesus, not Christ. Uh, but uh, so that the way you. I answered it was exactly the way I answered it in my playlist, Renee, is that we need to remember that this is not a new thought. This is this is a continuation. There was no chapter division here and when he, this was written. And, and this is part of the final little things we've been talking about. He's not saying be followers of him in terms of he's the only apostle. He's the only one that really has the gospel and you're to disregard everything else. But, Talk you know, about taking stuff way too far and out of context. Leave it yeah. to people, man. It's crazy. Yeah, but they crazy. do. And again, you know, the, you know, there are people who um, are um, not so knowledgeable about uh, this issue and, and, and many other things. And uh, they, when they hear me, rail against Paul onlyism, they you could very easily think that I'm obsessed or I'm I'm overstating it or something, but but um, believe me, uh, uh, I've been on YouTube for eleven years. The first couple of years, all my best friends were Paul onlyists, and they and I love them. They're they're saved brethren. Uh, I don't question that at all. They, they, I especially love them because they really preach in the gospel of faith alone in Christ alone. Um, but uh, the the way that they uh, just make uh, separate Paul from the others and his writings and him as an apostle is is a very problematic and it is a very serious problem. And uh, if you if you think that I'm exaggerating it, then start watching all their videos. Uh, there's plenty of people out there that they're on a mission to present, uh, they're, they're, they're the people that are gonna say, stick with Romans to Philemon. That's the only thing that you can't get saved by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You can't get saved by the red letters, the words of Jesus, the only Paul's writings. If you hear people teaching that, then go ahead and pay careful attention and, 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 and really listen to all their teaching. And then go to my playlist and consider that every one of their positions are easily refutable. Yeah. But it is a serious problem. That's why every time I see a verse, one of these verses that they're using to prop up their error, uh, I have to rail against it. Yep. And rightly so, Brother Luke. Okay. I'm glad we saw that the same way then. All right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you you did. You made the exact right distinction that I made. At least uh, you must be right because you agree with me. <laughs> okay, Brother Cripps, I'm going to read verse 1 in the uh, Amplified. It says, Pattern yourselves after me. Follow my example as I imitate and follow Christ the Messiah. There you go. See, the Amplified put it exactly the way that people should interpret it, in my opinion. He's just saying, follow my example. He's not saying... Don't follow the the first four books of the New Testament because you can't get saved by them. Don't follow anyone else. Don't follow anyone else or listen to anyone else as an example. He's saying, yeah, listen to me as an example because I'm imitating Christ. Do the same. Pattern yourself after me. Follow my example. He's not saying he's above Christ. He's not saying you don't listen to the words of of the Savior or the, or the other disciples even. Um He's made it clear when he's disagreed with something that one of the other apostles said. I mean, it's all there in Scripture for us to see when he disagreed with, you know, people uh, wanting others to be circumcised and eat this and eat, don't eat that and all that. He's made it clear. I mean, they argued sometimes. Um, but in this verse, he's just saying, I, you know, follow my example uh, because I am following Christ. So uh, I'm Im trying to imitate him as the Holy Spirit works in his life. So we should do the same. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Man, let's let's go to uh, verse 2 in the KJV. Oh, let me, let me see if there's any footnotes here first. Didn't look. Okay. No, no footnotes on verse 1. Uh, okay. Uh, verse 2 in the KJV says, now, I praise you, brethren, 
that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Are the Crips? Uh, I praise your brother that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances I delivered. Yeah. So again, as he said in other uh, other books that we've studied, other chapters that we've studied, he can't believe that people are so far removed from what they've already been taught. He has to keep going back over these things again. So now here he re reiterates again, um, first, first giving them a positive, you know, it's the old cookie technique. You said the positive first, which is, uh, you know, he's praising them and uh, encouraging them that you remember him in all things and keep the ordinances as he's delivered them. So that means all of them, all the things that he's written in the letters um, after the verse that we just read, be, he's the example, follow the example. So he's just uh, kind of reiterating that and what that means in terms of remembering what he's taught them and follow the ordinances because again, he's the example. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. So let's go to uh, the Amplified Renee for verse two says, I appreciate and commend you because you always remember me and everything and keep firm possession of the traditions, that is the, the substance of my instructions, mm -hmm. just as I have verbally passed them on to you. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's self-explanatory, you know, he's just saying that uh, he's pleased with the reports that, that they follow, uh, uh, follow his example and that they remember what he teaches them either in letter or when he's with them in person. Like mm -hmm. the foundational behavior. Mm -hmm. Cause I think, aren't these letters a response to questions that they had, you know, like, uh, like the house of Chloe and some other people had sent some issues going on in local churches in the yeah. town of Corinth. Yeah, when when we uh, did the uh, introduction to this book, uh, we we reviewed the uh, uh, letter or letters were sent to Paul, uh, alerting him that there were problems in the Corinthian church, basically five problems, and that they say, Paul, you need to deal with this, and of course he he does, but the first thing he deals with is their their lack their inability to deal with themselves you know don't you know you're going to judge angels yeah you're right. not able to deal with this you need me to deal with it okay i'll i'll deal with it but you should be able to deal with right this. yeah uh so um well let's go back to the kjv verse three and it says but i would have you know that the head of every man is christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God, Brother Cripps? Yeah, so um, head of every man is Christ. That makes sense. Head of every woman is the man. Now people get their feathers ruffled about that, I'm sure. Um, but that's certainly the way that it was at the time. And it uh, doesn't mean that women can't have ministry or, or uh, 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 can't have... Um, have people listen to them as they're uh, going over scripture and things like that. Um, it's just saying that the the head of the woman is the man. And I would assume, maybe I shouldn't assume, but I would assume that he's meaning uh, in terms of marriage that's been laid out before as, as, as the man um, uh, kind of leading the woman to Christ and, and uh, bathing in the waters of the word, so to speak. Um, but the, the thing that I get the most is the head of Christ is God, the father of Christ, and uh, Christ being our head. Now, to me, every believer should, should do, it should be that way for every believer. Christ should be the head of every believer, including women, women, men, whatever, Gentile, Jew, whatever. Uh, Christ is, is the one to follow. Um, yeah, I guess that I guess that's all I have to say about that. I'm ready to be corrected. Mm -hmm. hey, uh, Brother Luke, uh, no, Jace is not wrong. I I came to understand that when it means head, it means the glory of, like, uh, like the woman's the glory of man, and Christ is the glory of God. You know, it's kind of like that. But to me, this whole section is 
specific questions that um, the church was sending them, sending Paul, and he's addressing them specifically, like about, because there was a lot of stuff that the law uh, demanded that women and men do regarding their head and covering and all of that stuff. And he's just trying to make things put in order, how things need to work in order. Like everything should be in its order. There shouldn't be chaos. Everybody should know their place. Everybody uh, should speak that uh, speaking over people. There shouldn't be a bunch of confusion and chaos. Um, and we'll see that as, as it continues to go on. But when it says the head uh, of the woman is the man, in a sense, it can be that uh, uh, an authority thing, but it, it's more like um, the glory of them. You know, like uh, it's a, a mutual glory. It's, it's hard to explain what I'm trying to say. Like we should be... Um, the woman should glorify her man or man is glorified by his wife and God is glorified by Christ and Christ glorified. And then, you know, it's, it's hard to explain it in words. Do you, are you getting what I'm saying here? Yeah. I like uh, it. Okay. So, uh, I wish there was a, a better way to put what I see in my head, but yeah, it's, um, to me, it's, it's just about the order of things. Um, it's not, saying someone's less than another person no. it's, you know it's a, um, a symbiotic relationship mm -hmm. and it's beneficial uh to all so i i i don't i don't have a problem with that because i i get the point of it but i also would ask people to remember what was going on in first century and, and near east first century um women couldn't most of them couldn't even own property they couldn't inherit they, they couldn't work. They couldn't, a lot of them weren't even allowed to read. Uh, they weren't allowed to be publicly educated. They, uh, you know, there was a lot of stuff going on. And uh, it's, it, it seems like he's just putting things in their place to keep them acceptable and orderly. Uh, so it's not that uh, you, woman, you better stay in that place and, bow down to your man that's not what it's saying at all here no no well i'll crips i'll read it for you in the amplified and then I've, there's some footnotes to look at it says but i want you to know and realize that christ is the head of every man the head of a woman is her husband and the head of christ is god and yeah. in the ni in the nabre uh, it says, but I want you to know that Christ is the head of every man and a husband, the head of his wife and God, the head of Christ. So um, the way that it s says in, in the KJV, it's talking about a man that, uh, let me see. Uh, and, and let me see. The, the, and the head of the woman is the man. Mm -hmm. So that a person could say that all men are above all women. Uh, but the, the uh, NABRE and the NAB, um, NABRE and the Amplified, they don't say woman and man. They say uh, the woman and the husband, the husband yeah. and wife. Yeah. So um, uh, I don't know what grounds they have to, to, to say that. I don't know which is correct, but I'm inclined to think that uh, this is specific about. Uh, it's, you're right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you're right on that. That's what, when I said glory, that's what I meant of the husband, not just men in general. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, I know my, my, uh, my wife is, is, uh, uh, should I say that I'm I'm her, her crown or she's my crown or so I don't know. <laughs> I'm confused, but yeah, I consider her to be like just. Uh, how would you? How, what was the word that you used, uh, Renee? Uh, a uh, glory, a, a glory. Yeah, yeah. Just such a blessing. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So here's the here's the footnote for. Uh, in the NABRE, it says from verses 11, verse 2, to ver chapter 14, verse 40, this is the footnote in general. It says, 
This section of the letter is devoted to regulation of conduct at the liturgy. The problems Paul handles have to do with the dress of women in the assembly, improprieties in the celebration of community meals, and the use of uh, charisms or spiritual gifts. The statement in 1 Corinthians 11, 2, introduces all of these discussions, but applies more appropriately to the second. Uh, and then verse three, it says, women having been participating in worship at Corinth without the head covering, normal in Greek society of the period. Okay, uh, Paul stated, uh, goal is to bring them back into conformity with contemporary practice and propriety. Okay. All right. Okay. So based on that, any, any more uh, thoughts, Renee or Cripps? No, I think we covered it. Okay. Uh, all right. Wait, let's go to verse uh, four in the KJV. Uh, every man praying or prophesying uh, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Verse 5, but every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. Okay. Uh, I think Cripps is going first on these. Verse 4 and 5. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> uh, I'll read it for you in the Amplified then. Okay, Maybe, great. Okay. Four and five in the Amplified says, any man who prays or prophesies, that is, teaches, refutes, reproves, admonishes, and comforts, with his head covered, dishonors his head, that which is Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, and any woman who publicly prays or prophesies, that is, teaches, refutes, reproves, admonishes, or comforts, when she is bareheaded, dishonors, dishonors her head, which is her husband, and is the same as if her head were shaved. Okay? Crips? Yeah, I, look, um, I, I, I don't want to disagree with Paul, but I don't think this has any application to I mean, if, if a woman d decides even today, I mean, I, I don't think it looks good on everyone, but if they shave their head, I, I don't understand why you'd be putting outward appearance as to be important. So this has to have been for the time to me, in my yeah. opinion. Well, have you heard of transsexualism and, and cross-dressing and that kind well, of thing? Of course, but a woman shaving her head doesn't necessarily mean that they're transgender. If, if, well, what about women that are have chemotherapy and they lose all their hair? Are they sinning then if they're still preaching the gospel while they're going through chemotherapy? I, I, I'm not trying to apply it universally. I'm just trying to give you the maybe the context of the concern at the time is that, uh, look, we want to keep a distinction between male and female here. Yeah, and, uh, yeah let's at the time. Each, let's not wear each other's clothes. Let's not wear each other's hairstyle. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that might have something to do with it. Renee, what do you say? Yeah, some of it, but also this had a lot to do with the Talmud. Uh, from what I understand, they had some really uh, legalistic, ritualistic things that uh, weren't necessarily commanded by God. Remember, he talks about the yoke you put on people's necks. Uh, they were man's tradition. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that's where this is coming from, where the, they had the, these things in the Talmud. But what 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 this represents here, if if like in the Talmud, they would tell the men to cover their head before prayer, right? Well, part of that was that they uh, had to be covered. They couldn't be in the presence of God. But now that Christ has come, we are under his blood. Amen. And since he is the head, to cover the man's head would be like covering up Christ, covering up what he's accomplished. We can come boldly to the throne of grace. So if you cover your head, you're still saying I'm under that condemnation of the law as opposed to Christ uh, who is our head and we should openly profess him. So if you're covering your head, you're it's in a way not professing uh, the blood and how it's uh, made us able to stand uh, in God's presence now, because that's why he says, and the head of a man is Christ. 
So if a man covers his head during prayer, he's covering up Christ. So um, I, I, I would agree with Luke too, because later on it talks about the covering and it's referencing hair length, hair length. So uh, the, the covering can also be referring to hair, but I think there were some specific things going on with women because he mentions it in another area about not adorning themselves with a lot of jewelry and fancy hairdos to draw attention to themselves. Um, so uh, I think he's trying to, again, just show the order um, of what's appropriate um, in the public arena when we when we meet together. But uh, as far as him saying to, it's a dishonor to cover the man's head, well, if the head of man is Christ and you cover the head, you're covering Christ. So I, I, in a way, I think that he's spiritualizing that some. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we're getting close to the end here, uh, but I want to let me see if I can do. A, well, I don't know. There's a lot of verses that are connected here, so I guess we ought to leave it there. And that way we'll have time to give our thoughts and not go much past 11. Uh, so we'll we'll uh, begin with verse uh, seven uh, next time. Okay. Okay. Um, but I'm trying to look at the chat room and boy, it's just, I can't keep, it's making me dizzy. It's going so fast. I just, a lot of activity in the chat room. There was one thing I saw in caps. Let me see. I think someone had a question. Uh, oh, here it is. Uh, can we add this to the question LS? What does LS mean? Because I've been arguing this with a few people. From my understanding, a woman can teach but not usurp authority in the church. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can. Uh, I'll copy this and, and save it so that we can uh, uh, put it on the Sunday program. Okay. Uh, all right. Let me ask uh, first, Brother Cripps. Uh, can you uh, give us a summary of uh, the, the study tonight? Sure, sure. I I, um, I think that it covered a lot of ground in a short period of time. We got through some verses and started uh, verse 11, which is good. Um, again, we see a kind of a repeat of things that he uh, really, really has covered before. Um, you know, I don't want to go too much into the same things, but he, he's just um, encouraging people about similar things that obviously were a big deal at the time um and uh I, you know there there's uh lots of stuff to be taken from the the eating and not eating and why we do that and um i i like brother luke's idea and and uh, when i went to christian school that that joy thing was something that appeared in a lot of places jesus first others next and you last um, particularly hard to follow in, in today's world, but um, I, I think it would bring joy if we all live like that. So I'm, I'm taking that as uh, something to think about from here on out. Um, so I appreciate the study and I appreciate you guys in the chat. All right. Thank you, brother. And uh, Renee, what do you say? Uh, yeah, it's going to be, we're getting into some stuff that's really cultural, like the uh, both you guys were talking about and Cripps was like, man, this is really <laughs> cultural and, and what was going on at that time. And in the Middle East, it's still an issue. There's a lot of people in Africa that uh, demand the women wear head coverings. Um, Islam does the same thing. So uh, uh, I know some of the Orthodox Jews in L.A., the women would wear wigs over their real hair as a hair covering. <laughs> it was bizarre to me, but um, some of this is cultural. Uh, again, I think it's uh, the whole point of it, if we just want to look at things logically, is do all things in order. Don't draw attention to yourself. Be a part of the community. Be selfless. Do everything to glorify Jesus. Everything you do, do it unto the Lord. Everything you do, do it so that people can know him and be saved and that we're serving him. And that that's the point of all of it. We can make it. You know, it's great we break it down line by line, precept upon precept like that. But if you want to take the message overall, 
it's all about him and showing his love through us because the goal is that people get to know who Jesus is. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you. I, uh, um, yeah, we're, we're entering uh, some uh, scriptures that uh, uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, make sense of it and, and figure it all out exactly right. But thankfully, we don't have to be right on everything. So I'm, boy, I'm really relieved to know that. <laughs> if I had to get everything in the Bible, understood it exactly right, I'd, I'd be in trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's fun. It's, it's, it, there's nothing more fun. I mean, I, I get sometimes people call me up and I get start talking on the phone about the Bible with them and, and, uh, I would talk for hours and then I come here and talk for hours at night and hey, I would I never would have imagined 40 years ago, 50 years ago that uh, I would ever have this kind of an interest in the Bible and, and talking about Jesus. but uh, it's the most interesting thing there is and uh, and to be able to spend time with other believers who love the Lord as, as I do and love the scriptures and, and we try to figure it all out together, it's just the most fun thing there is. Yeah. So I appreciate you, Crips and, and Renee and and uh, everybody in the chat room, our, our congregation. And um, so the next program uh, uh, on my channel will be Friday, Fellowship Friday. Make sure you join us at 930 Eastern. Renee, you have a, a program tomorrow night? Yes, I plan to go forward with the Thursday Theological Throwdown. Okay. Any, any, uh, you want to uh, tantalize us with any? Uh, I, I hadn't talked to Lisa, but and Brother Dave, if you're still around, I had planned on continuing with uh, Brother Dave um, this week. All right. Okay. So join uh, Renee and, and uh, Dave or whatever they end up having on their agenda. That'll be tomorrow night, 930 Eastern time. Uh, and then of course we, uh, we have our Sunday church program at 5 PM Eastern. And hopefully this, this week, uh, brother Cripps will have his uh, true story live uh, up and running again. I, I hope you can get it back. Uh, I'm very, very interested in the, the new direction you're going to be uh, taking that. Thank so you. please join our brother Cripps for that. And so congregation, thanks again for being here and bless you all in the name of our great savior, God, Jesus. Amen.